First there was Mercury. I mean, actually that wasn't the first. The first one was Mars, but that would ruin the dramatic entrance. Like this just did. Where were we? Oh yeah, okay. Then came the Jupiter and the Saturn. Giants among the others. And then... Uh, forget about that one. Then the Neptune came. Now in its fourth iteration and with a 500mm per second top speed and utilizing Clipper firmware. This is going to be one to remember. Alright, first up, these two printers are both obviously bed slingers. It seems like the days of high-speed printers being Core XYs or Deltas are truly gone. And because of this, I wasn't quite so hyped up about this printer. I kind of expected it to underperform because it is a bed slinger. But I think I might have to change my mind because these are really cool. Let's take a look at the specs. So firstly, this printer has a 225 by 225 by 265 build volume. It has belt tensioners, leveling wheels underneath. It has the standard PEI flex plate. Nothing really super fancy here, but at the back we have a dual Z with a timing belt to sync both sides, just like the Sidewinder printers have. Except, hey, what's, what's this guy at the back? It's a big old tank thing. This is actually four extra part cooling fans that are constantly blowing a little cyclone onto your printed part. Because it's a high-speed printer, we need good cooling. I think they got the idea from other high-speed printers like the Bamboo Lab X1C or the Creality K1. They both have big supplementary fans that are delivering air onto the printed part. Although I kind of expected those because they have an enclosure where there's lots of hot air, you need to move more air to cool down the printed part because it's warmer than if you didn't have an enclosure. Um, so it's interesting to see this on a bed slinger that doesn't have an enclosure. I guess they just really wanted to have as much airflow as possible. Because this prints at 500 millimeters per second, it's crazy fast. And for a bed slinger especially, you really, really need good cooling. And yeah, this delivers. Kind of a taster as to what they were expecting from this printer, super high speed filament guzzler, hot potato, crazy flying blaze rod, this magmatic dynamo, Uncle Frank's sizzling paprika, wind, earth and fire on stage, the 2003 European heat wave, Fahrenheit 451. Are you recording? Anyway, these come in addition to the dual part cooling fans on the print head. So in total, this printer has six part cooling fans. And this is really cool, pardon the pun, because what if we can remove all of the part cooling fans from the print head to save on weight? Wouldn't that be more beneficial for the motor? Time will tell. Okay, obviously we got to talk about the painfully obvious elephant in the room. So six part cooling fans. You know, sometimes fans kind of make noise sometimes. Yeah, it's it's definitely not a tiny mouse, um, but it is comparable to other printers like the X1C or the K1, which are both quite loud. Um, but get used to noise, guys. This is high speed printing. We need good cooling. There's no way around this unless you use silent fans. Maybe that's a possibility. Can you hear me? Moving to the print head here, we can actually see a, a new thing. So the printer actually looks very, very, very similar to the Neptune 3 series besides the secondary cooling unit. Um, but the hot end is a little bit different. So this goes up to 300C, has an all metal hot end. It has new custom nozzles. So these are not the standard Mark 8 nozzles that we had with the Neptune 3 series. Obviously, this printer's going fast. We need a lot more volumetric flow. So instead of going for the volcano nozzle, though, they just made a kind of a short volcano nozzle. These are about five or six millimeters shorter than a standard volcano nozzle. But yeah, we need that extra throughput that is just not possible to have with a Mark 8. We got our direct drive right here with a tiny ABL sensor underneath. And for the extruder, we have a small NEMA 14 style stepper motor. The hot end heats up very quickly and they must have put a 50 or a 60 watt heating cartridge in here because it is very fast. Moving up here to the filament sensor we have a standard end stop sensor and you guys know how I feel about these. Everyone knows I don't like end stop filament sensors but this works really well. I am just burned from previous adventures in 3D printing. We do also have some lights so there's an LED bar at the top of the printer and there's one smaller one just under the print head as well, so you can see exactly what you're doing. Assembly of the printer took maybe 15 minutes tops. It was really straightforward, very easy. 
So all I had to do was put on the vertical profiles, the spool holder, filament sensor, um, the secondary cooling unit and the touch screen and connect all the cables. And it was done in 15 minutes, it was very cool. There is some nice strain protection at the back of the bed for the cables. I think it's the same design they had for the Neptune 3 range. Uh, it works really nicely though. And for the cable loom, I mean, I don't like it. It kind of sticks out. It doesn't get in the way. There's a clip to hold it, but I just, cable looms, eh. So let's take a look at the interface down here. So again, the touchscreen is quite similar, if not the same to the Neptune 3 range, which is, which is great. I was a huge fan of that touchscreen. It is magnetically held in place and it does offer great detail. So if you want to change something on the go, you can do it on the touchscreen. It's really nice. We also have an SD card port, a USB-C and a USB-A port at the front of the printer for interfacing. And on the side, we have an ethernet port. So this is interesting. You would expect that a printer, and I must remind you this printer has clipper and basically every clipper printer has Wi-Fi. You would expect this to have Wi-Fi as standard, but it, it doesn't. I'm not a huge fan of this. I don't like cable cutter and I'm sure a lot of you would agree with me on that. Uh, but we do have a web interface. We can use Fluid to interface with this printer so we can use it remotely. Now, I mentioned before that it doesn't have Wi-Fi as standard, but you can get Wi-Fi. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail about it here because there's a video uh, that you can watch by Alan from Mandic Really. He did this really, really great video on how to get Wi-Fi set up on the Neptune 4 series printers. So take a look at that. Should be right here somewhere. The other thing that is pretty special about these printers is the SG-15 bearings that we see on the X gantry and underneath the bed as well. So we've seen these before on the Anycubic Cobra 2. We did a review on that printer a few weeks back. You can, you can see it here as well. Um, that actually has the SG-15 bearings uh, instead of the rubber bearings, which are much more common. And I kind of thought, oh, maybe we could use these as for super high printers as well, because the FL Sun V400 used similar bearings and they weren't the same, but they were similar. And so I was thinking, okay, maybe we can go up to 400, 500 millimeters per second using these. And yeah, it seems, it seems we can. Motion is super, super, super smooth. And the rigidity on the printhead is awesome because of these bearings. I like them so much that I decided to buy some and I'm going to work these into a new project in a few weeks. It's going to be cool. These, I should note, are only available on the Pro version of the printer. On the standard version, we have the also standard rubber bearings. There are some other differences between these printers as well. So on the Pro version, there's a lot more metal parts in the frame and, and parts of the motion system. Uh, when we look at this, we can see there's actually more injection molded parts as well. But on the Pro version, there is also a dual heated bed, which I will talk about now. So with a lot of printers and their heated beds, there is generally just an on off of the bed. It doesn't matter how big the print is. Maybe it's just a calibration cube. Maybe it's a big old helmet that takes up the whole bed. Either the print bed is heated or it's not heated. Now there have been energy saving features in the past. A lot of printers these days have an eco feature, which just turns the bed off after it gets past the crucial first layers, uh, which is really nice. But I think this is the first time that I've seen independently heated sections on a print bed. Because of this feature, the printer can automatically detect the size of the model that you're printing. So if you're printing with something really small, like a, a calibration cube, it only has to turn on that part of the bed and the rest of the bed just stays off. That's a lot of energy we're saving here. If we take a look under the cover, we can see the board. Everything seems to be totally integrated here. The days of pies and pads are long gone. We got a standard MCU processor here, and underneath the crazy huge heatsink here is the clipper processor. I think we'll be seeing a lot of these kinds of boards in the near future, everything totally integrated. There is also this mystery power out here. What could it be? Even more cooling? Probably not. 2.5 amps is pretty high. Maybe it's an, an MMU? No, probably not. It's a normal DC output. I don't know. Let, it, let us know what you think this is in the comments below. So that is what we got right here, but who cares? How does it print? Well, remember how I said I wasn't super hyped about this printer because it said it was doing 500 millimeters per second and I couldn't really believe that a bed slinger at this price can do that crazy speed? Well, it sure can. 
On the USB, we have some pre-sliced files and there's one of uh, Benji uh, that says it can be done in 18 minutes. So can this be done in 18 minutes? Yeah, that's at its highest speed. And wow, that came out almost perfectly. That's super good quality. Elegoo are actually saying that their standard speed is 250 millimeters per second, but I think that's a bit pessimistic because I've been printing these at 350 millimeters per second and the results are almost flawless. These are super smooth. What do you guys think? Do you think this is good for printing at 350 millimeters per second on a bed slinger? I'm really enjoying Polyterra at the minute. This looks fantastic, even when printed super quick. Groot came out really well. This is Polyterra Earth Brown. Really nice results. I'm really happy with these printers. The extrusion is clean and smooth. The PEI works well. It prints super fast. There is a web interface. The touchscreen is, is very detailed. And the price right now for the Pro version in the shop is 362 euro. That's... That's kind of low, right? Okay, when I test printers, I, I tend to be, let's say, critical sometimes about it. I, I don't like reviewing a printer and saying it's totally perfect. Um, and there are a couple of things that, that bother me about this printer. So like the lack of the Wi-Fi interface uh, when you get it out of the box, uh, the filament um, end stop style sensor. Um, but there's nothing really that jumps out and says, whoa, hold on there. I can't really find anything that I really, really dislike about this printer, which is unusual. This is a good printer, not just for beginners or for someone who already has a few printers. This, this is just a good all around printer. I'm impressed, especially when you see other printers on the market that can print with the same quality and speed and they're like twice the price. And what's more, this is a clipper enabled printer. This is open source. This is not some closed off proprietary machination. I will be using these printers, both of them a lot in the next coming weeks. Uh, so there might be some more follow up posts and videos about this. Um, but if you guys have any questions that were not addressed in this video, then just let us know, write us an email or write us a comment below. And we'll see you guys next time. Later.